Hi everyone, and welcome back to Kimbo's Comfort Kitchen, and it's that time of year for peaches. Peaches are one of my favorite fruit, and right now they are juicy, full, rich, ripe, they're awesome. So, I thought I'd do a really easy recipe today, which is peach jam, but with a twist. It's going to have uh, habanero in it. So it's a spicy heat jam. Unlike anything that you've had before, it goes great with so many things. I mean, you can use it like you normally would for a lot of other things, but it's also great with pork chops. Uh, instead of an applesauce, I use peach habanero jam. Uh, I like it on crackers with goat cheese. I like it on pate. Especially if you're a Dane, we love this kind. Of, we love jam on cheese, and this habanero uh, peach jam is amazing. Uh, so it's very quick, very easy, and at the very end, I'll show you what it looks like on a wonderful pork chop dinner. Okay, so let's get going. All right, so let's start with the ingredients. First off is the star of the show, as our peaches, and I just went to the grocery store and got, or uh, to the market, and got some fresh local peaches, which I'm going to uh, pear, pit, and chop up, and then I'm going to weigh them, and that's how I will know how much sugar to use because it, it's a super easy recipe as I've said before it's going to be equal parts sugar to equal parts um, peach and uh, one whole lemon and I've got some vanilla and I got two habaneros and I've got these little half pint jars and I'm going to show you from start to finish exactly how to prepare this jam and it as I said is spectacular so let's get to the first part Okay, so step one is let's just cut the flesh away from the peaches like that. I've washed them obviously and now I'm just going to do a simple dice like this into medium size. And I'm going to do this for all of them. Place them in bowl. Rough chop, dice, it's all good. And I'll continue and I'll show you what we got after. On to the next step. This turned out, there's eight medium sized peaches. And this uh, came to just over a kilo or 1,066 grams. And I've got the same amount in sugar, which I'm just going to put aside for a second. And now I'm going to cut up the habaneros. Now, you noticed that with the peaches, I didn't uh, take the skins off. Some people might like to do that, but personally, I prefer the uh, rough texture. And besides, most of it gets assimilated into the uh, jam anyway. It just uh, adds for a nice, more of a uh, country feel. Now, with the habaneros, a couple of things. One is, I like to take out the seeds. I know some people don't. But given how hot these are to begin with, I find that uh, keeping the seeds in there is just a little bit of an overkill. And you also have to make sure that once you finish chopping these finely, there's two of them here obviously, and you have to make darn sure that you wash your hands vigorously several times to get the oil off your fingers. Because if you don't, and you touch your eyes, or other parts of your body, which I won't mention here, um, you are going to be in a lot of pain for quite a while. So please remember to make sure that you wash vigorously with the soap. So we're going to dice this up. Actually, I'm doing not a dice. This is a relatively fine chop. And without the seeds, and I took out some of the membranes, it doesn't have to be exact because after all we're going to mash all of this up in a minute but I want to be able to make sure that the habanero is evenly interspersed in the jam obviously you don't want to all of a sudden have a big bite of habanero I don't think that would be a lot of fun so that's what we've got there and then I've got a lemon and I'm going to use the juice of a whole lemon. One of the tricks when you're 
trying to juice a lemon is to make sure that you uh, squish it a little bit and that releases and crushes some of the membranes as I roll this just cut it in half and I use my hand to catch the seeds I'm going to show you how to do that in a second but at this point I'm going to take all of this into a relatively heavy bottom pot I'm going to add in my half tablespoon of vanilla extract I'm going to squeeze in the lemon juice it's so absurdly simple you can't believe how good this tastes afterwards And this heat that comes out of it is, it's there, but it's, it's kind of subtle, if that makes any sense at all. And the lemon just cuts that. And now I'm going to pour the sugar in. I know it seems like a ton of sugar, because it is. So if you're diabetic, this probably isn't for you. <coughs> but... Now I'm just going to use a straight potato masher and start to mix this around. And I don't, again, it's a sort of a country style version. So I'm not going to worry too much about how fine, how finely mashed this is. Think of it just like dirty potatoes. See how this creams up really nicely quite quickly. So I'm going to mash this a little bit longer and then I'm going to let it sit for an hour and we'll come back. Oopsies. I guess I'm back sooner than I thought. It's probably better if I put habaneros in. They're sitting right here on the edge. Duh. But so like I said, so now I'm going to mash these up. It was probably better that I added them li later anyway, truth be known. So we'll see you back in a few minutes, one hour of my time. So it's been an hour, I've done a rough mash. You can see the lumps in the skin and everything. Don't worry about that. That's all going to um, soften up and dissolve more or less. It'll still have a bit of a chunky flavor to it, which I enjoy personally. Now you could peel the peaches if you wanted to, but this has been an hour and I've preheated the oven to uh, 350 degrees and that is for these jars. So I've got approximately 2,000 grams, um, just uh, about two kilos of uh, sauce, which I'm gonna put in here. But before we do that, I need to make sure these are sterilized. So these will go in the oven at uh, 350 for about 20 minutes at the same time that I'm simmering this. And when this starts to simmer, the foam's going to come up, and I'll show that to you shortly. Okay, so now we're about 20 minutes in, 25 minutes, I guess, more or less. And you can just see the foam there. So we're going to keep uh, reducing this until the foam disappears. Okay, so we're now about 30 minutes in, and you can see that the foam is gone. There's a little bit on the side here but that's okay. And I'm going to turn the heat off and take it off the heat and let it chill for a bit and then I'm going to pull the jars out of the oven and we'll go from there. Alright, so I've allowed this to rest for about 10 minutes. It's still pretty warm. And I've got the jars that are out of the oven. Now there are other ways that you can sterilize. I mean you can put them, you can boil them and all the rest of it, but I find just baking them in the oven for half an hour much better and I'm going to fill this up to within about just beyond before the threading is and then I'm going to take being careful not to touch the inside of the lid of the jar I'm going to put that on top 
screw that on. Don't put it on real tight. It's warm. And now you want to invert it, turn it upside down, and that will create the seal for you. Just keep that inverted along with all the others until it uh, cools down. Then you can turn it right side up again and put it in the fridge. And this will last at least three weeks in the fridge. But I'm saying, you know, for me personally, I'm not advocating this, but I mean, me, I have this in the fridge for almost two months uh, without a problem once you sterilize it properly. So here's what we're left with, with uh, just over uh, a kilo of total mixture between the sugar and the uh, peaches. This is what I've got. These jars are 250 ml or half pint jars. And once they've uh, chilled down, I'm gonna flip them back over again. And you could put them in the cupboard and all the rest of it, but I <laughs> personally, mine just don't last that long. Um, this one here is going to be used for the next dish that I'm making right after this uh, scene. You know, so you want to stay tuned. I know that we use it for um, cheese, a lot of things, or you could use it on pate. It is pretty spicy. Um, I would recommend if you, if you want to cut it down, you can. I mean, I use two habaneros without the seeds, as I said before. But uh, you could go to half that. I mean, you, it's your personal choice and what your taste is and what you can handle. So let's take a look at what we do with this for dinner. All right, so here's the pièce de la résistance. I've got a one and a quarter inch uh, pork chop topped with uh, super caramelized onions, which you can find on my website. Plus, I've got baby kale salad with, topped with... Uh, sesame seeds and cram dried cranberries and then I've got oven roasted potatoes which aren't actually oven roasted they're done in my frying pan which you can also find on my website and then this baby I've got the peach habanero jam and I put it on the side because that way you can decide exactly how much you want whether it's too spicy or not spicy enough for you you know what I hope you enjoy this one this is a great freaking meal thank you very much bye